الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم الذي خلق الموت والحياه ليبلوكم ايكم احسن عملا صدق الله العظيم all praises are for allah the creator of the heavens and the earth the creator of each and every one of us the creator of everything we glorify allah and we give thanks to him for his blessings and his favors upon us we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this day of jumu'ah we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us and giving us the opportunity to be here in his house to glorify him and to worship him we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our health and our well-being i testify that there is none to be worshiped but allah he is alone and he has no partner and i testify that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger ibadallah my dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Qur'an it is he Allah alladhi khalaqa al-mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala it is he Allah who has created death and life so that he may test us to see which one of us is the best in conduct which one behaves well we are living in a time my dear brothers and my dear sisters where people have gone through periods of frustration anxiety we are living in a time where we will interact or we will meet people regularly who are suffering from mental health issues we we would meet people because of what has gone on in their lives over the last uh, uh, approximately 2 years we will meet people who are frustrated has has they have given up and it seems that there is no future ahead for them and so today i want to remind you and remind myself that we are all different we have different views we have different opinions and we may at times act in a situation in a different way this is not the time to criticize this is not the time to chastise this is not the time for us to exhibit immorality to exhibit characteristics that are not in line with the deen of islam and so today let's remind ourselves that what really matters with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is how well we behave allah says in the quran inna akramakum 'inda allah atqakum 
Verily, the best of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is most God-fearing, righteous, pious, the one who recognizes right as right and practices it, recognizes wrong as wrong and abstains from it. Th that is the most honorable one in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Muslims, we are not only concerned with this dunya, but we are concerned more so with the akhirah. We are not only concerned with life in this world, but we are also very much concerned about life in the world hereafter, when we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us take example from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one who was very patient with people, one who was very forgiving, one who listened well and understood people so that he could address the concerns of each and every one of them. Even in our, in our khutbah, we are being reminded that, that we address the people in, in the language that they understand. It, it is not only in, in terms of Arabic and English and whatever other language. It is in terms of the simplicity of things that you assess people and you try to meet them in terms of your communication with them, in terms of your dealings with them, your actions with them. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the best of exemplar. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Verily, in the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a perfect example for you. Allah says in the Qur'an about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And you are an, of an exalted nature. He, he behaved well. And even though he had authority over people, he was the leader. He, he, he still treated everyone equally. And if he felt at any time that he has done wrong or injustice to anyone, or people felt that way, the Prophet ﷺ would ask them to forgive. He would ask them that if they want some sort of compensation. Remember well when he was uh, once uh, checking the people in line before they went for a battle, and one of the companions, his stomach was a little out, and the Prophet وسلم, just touched him to push it in. And he said, you, you have hurt me. And the Prophet وسلم, said, well, do likewise to me. That was Prophet Muhammad And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ Repel the evil with one which is better. If there is some sort of enmity, or misunderstanding with you and another person, and you do it in this way by 
coming up with something that is better, that person whom you felt may have some hatred for you or some dislike for you, he may gravitate to you and want to be your friend and want to be close to you. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of in the Qur'an. Allah says in the Qur'an something that we strive so much throughout our lives and especially in the month of Ramadan we want to increase that taqwa, build that God-fearingness. Allah tells us about behavior in how you interact with people because these are the qualities of the pious ones. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْدُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ عِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and make haste towards the forgiveness of your Lord and towards paradise. Jannah, its wit is the heavens and the earth put together. And who is it for? Uiddat lil muttaqeen. It is for the pious ones, the people who behave well because that those it, are the qualities of the pious ones and then Allah explains he says those who spend in ease and in adversity you don't look down upon people that oh I'm better than them because I have and they don't have but the, the humanity within you and the love within you guides you to want to help them even if you do not have enough for yourself. Those who spend in ease and in adversity. And, and that was the practice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He, he never turned away anyone who came asking. If he did not have himself, he would look to the companions to see which one could help. The Prophet ﷺ preferred to go without than sending someone away. The person who came to ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He continues and He tells us about the qualities of the pious ones. Those who control their anger. And, and this goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning. You, you will encounter people who are going through a lot of difficulties in life. You will encounter people whom you don't really understand. And you will think that they're crazy. But, but there are people who are suffering from mental health diseases. And, and you have to have patience. Don't get angry with them. Have patience. It might be our own families, our dear friends, people whom we have been close to our whole lives. They may say something or do something that we felt that we, we, we don't appreciate. You don't know what life is for those people you don't know what under what circumstances they are living have patience with them Allah talks so much about patience in the Quran and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says as sabru jaza'uhu al-jannah patience 
Its reward is paradise. At times it becomes very difficult to control that anger. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew about this. So when one man came to him asking for advice, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La takhdab, do not be angry. And the man asked again and again and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam repeated it. Do not be angry. Have patience with people. And you will encounter people who will do things that uh, you, you don't want to forgive them for. But the muttaqoon, they follow the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were forgiving. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgive those whom we would think that would not have any forgiveness. He forgive those who did harm to his dear ones. His uncle whom he loved dearly His body was mutilated in the battle of Uhud. But the Prophet wasallam forgave Hind and Wahshi. He forgave the people of Taif who stoned him when he went to call them to Islam. And he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to leave them alone. Perhaps out of them will come those who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so be forgiving. Always look to how you can forgive the mistakes of others. And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, People will need a lot of help. People will need so much goodness coming from us. Continue to help and to do good in any way you can. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. And Allah loves those who do good. You may think and say that I have given enough. You know, look at our brothers and sisters in Palestine. People may think that, well, we have helped them so much, I have given so much. But they still need help. And so we need to demonstrate that goodness in us by helping those who are in need. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Innama bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq. Verily, I have been sent to perfect good behavior. As I said before, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are a people who don't only look at dunya, but we look at akhirah. And every good that we do in this world, every smile, every little good thing that we do, it benefits us. If we don't see the benefit here, we will see the benefit in the hereafter. Because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي الْمِيزَانِ أَثْقَلُ مِنْ حُسْنِ الْخُلُقِ There is nothing in the scale of the believer. 
heavier in the scale of the believer than good behavior, than behaving well with others, helping people, being kind to them, being loving, show concern for them. Even if you can't give, you know, monetarily, that you pray for them, you make dua on their behalf. This is what will make our scale, our, our mizan, very heavy with good deeds on the Day of Judgment. And that's what we want, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. We want our, our scale to be heavy with good deeds because that will also help to determine where we go, if it is Jannah or if it is Jahannam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was asked about al-bir righteousness he said al-birru husnul khuluq bir righteousness it is good character it is good behavior don't, don't you know, like, we, we, we know that people, all of us will not think the same. And we will not do these things in the same way. And we will have differences of opinion. So don't make that an issue when you want to look down on others and uh, take away their rights or treat them in, in, in a, a very unmannerly way. And demonstrate the type of behavior towards them that ought not to come from us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Akmalul Mu'minina Imanan Ahsanuhum Akhlaqan. The most perfect man in faith. among the believers is the one who demonstrate the best behavior. You see how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tied these two together? Iman and khuluq, faith and behavior, mannerism. We can't attain that level of perfection in our faith if we don't behave well look at all the look at all the ibadat our salah our zakah our saum hajj if we check in the quran when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this ibadat it's all about training us to behave well, to have good characteristic. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Verily, salah prevents you from shameful and unjust deeds. It is the believer who prays. It demonstrates some sort of iman, some sort of faith because you're praying. But when you leave the prayer and you demonstrate something else in terms of your behavior, not being in, in, in accordance with what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, then, then something is wrong with the faith, something is wrong with the iman, something is wrong with the salah. Or any ibadat for, for that matter. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he tells us about the people who will be closest to him and he says inna min ahabbikum ilayya wa aqrabikum minni majlisan yawm al-qiyamah 
أحاسنكم أخلاقا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم He said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the dearest and the most love of you to me on the day of judgment will be those who demonstrate good character good behavior Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when asked what is it that will cause more people to enter paradise he said taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluq the fear of Allah, piety, righteousness, and good character, good behavior. Good behavior which includes being kind and loving and compassionate, being people who are concerned with others, and you try to remember them always, help them. And even if you cannot help them physically, you, you, you make dua and call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them victory and to grant them help. The attitude of the believers. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, I implore you, as it seems that things will get back to some normal scene and people will go about their lives life life would not be normal for many life would not be normal for many and you would see people you will meet people you will interact with people on a regular basis whom you have to have patience with understand them and communicate with them in the language in which they understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. May Allah protect us. And may Allah give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may He save us from the torment of hellfire. <laughs> الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters we need to have patience with one another and we need to always demonstrate that goodness towards people in this gathering we are mostly adults but one set of people who will be needing our attention are the young ones. You know, when you socialize, when you're together, it helps you to understand how to behave. That's what, the, you know, you, the social interaction. Many of our young ones have been learning only virtually. And when they come back to be in person, they might experience some difficulties because some of them may have lost that uh, social uh, interaction 
they, they might have lost the, the whole idea of how do we behave with one another now that we are in person and that we are close to each other. And, and so we have a responsibility to start with ourselves and to teach it to our young ones. I, I want to leave you with this. There was a man who was having issues with his son. Thought that his son's behavior was not the best towards him. So he took his son to Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn al-Khattab and he said, my son doesn't behave well with me. My son is so and so. And he complained. And before Amir al Mu'minin could pass judgment, the son said, Amir al Mu'minin, doesn't a child have rights? And Umar ibn al Khattab said, Yes. May Allah be pleased with him. He said, yes. What are these rights? That you choose someone good to be the mother of your child. You know, it is said, Al-Jannatu tahta aqdam al-ummahat Paradise lies beneath the feet of thy mothers. And it is said also, Al-Umm Madrasa. The mother is a school, a huge school, which you can't replace. And so, Amir al-Mu'mineen said that one of the rights that the child has is that the father chooses someone good to be the mother of the child. Because, of course, when people get married, they're hoping to have children. So choose someone who will be a good mother. And then give your child a good name. A name that he or she would be, uh, you know, proud of. And then teach your child the Qur'an. Teach your child what is in the Qur'an. Mannerism, behavior. How do you live your life? In al Quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. Verily, this Quran guides to that which is most upright. That's what is in the Quran. That's why you need to teach your child the Quran. And then the child said to Amir al Mu'minin, My father has done none of the three. He chose someone to be my mother who is a fire worshipper. He gave me the name Ju'alan, which I'm not proud of. And he never taught me anything of the Quran. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said, you come complaining of your child being uh, unjust, un not being kind. When you have wronged your child, you have not done justice by your child. So, be careful, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It's not only about us. It's about the young ones. And we need to set examples. We need to behave well so that our children will also behave well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and protect us. لَقَدْ أَمَرَنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى الله من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وعمر وثمان وعليم ونستة الباقين الرشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على دين الإسلام 
ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا هاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قديتها ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت اللهم انصر عبادك في كل مكان اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قم السلام